and I'm here to tell you about a, a problem that we're solving for the consumer, and it's a very important problem, and you can all be a part of it. Um, in 2009, I started a company, actually got an idea for starting a company because of a friend of mine who was battling a, a rare form of head and neck cancer. Okay, so, of course, his friends, everybody who loved him, wanted to do the best that we could for him, and in the process of this, this um, battle with cancer, he lost his vision. So I went online, and I'm thinking, you know, what can I do to help him? And I find these watches that are called talking watches. So you press a button, and it actually tells you the time. It's actually really helpful for somebody who has vision loss because they have a little bit of independence. They don't have to ask people constantly what time is it. So this really was very helpful for him. He loved the idea, but when I ordered this watch, it was terrible. It, uh, it, we immediately started having problems. He would turn his wrist and the little buttons on the side would become accidentally deprogrammed. Of course, he had no vision, so there's no way for him to reprogram it. You know, for me, it was a, bit, a really difficult because it was a very cheap watch and I wasn't there all the time. His caregivers had, a, had trouble with it, but worse than that was the design was awful. Um, it was loud, so you press the button and you're announcing the time to everybody around you, which is awkward, you know, if you're in a doctor's office or something like that, you know, and you're, you're maybe anxious, you want to know what time it is, you don't want to announce it to everybody, so, you know, um, there was that, and also, you know, the, the, the little tiny speakers were not waterproof, and when it got wet, well, we just threw it out, you know, so, I said to him, you know, sadly, you know, I lost my friend in May of 2010, I'm in good company, somebody else already cried, <laughs> so, um, uh, but before he left this world, I said, you know, I think we should make a better audio watch. And he said, it's a good idea. So fast forward, it's September of 2010. I'm in the MBA program at Georgetown. I started in the entrepreneurship program. And I begin my design of this new and improved audio watch. And the long and the short of it is, uh, you know, what will happen is you press the face of the watch to hear the time. It's like one big button. Your hands are shaking for medication. You cannot miss it. It's a big button. And then volume control, of course. We're going to turn, we're going to turn the bezel to control the volume. And nothing like this has been done. So it actually turns out as simple as that is, it's actually a disruptive technology. And so I pulled together a team of five excellent advisors. I've got a biomedical engineer who made a health and heart monitoring watch. I've got the former advisor to the Perkins School for the Blind for Assisted Living Devices, specializing in retail for 20, more than 20 years, and a, and a website designer who's done nothing but medical devices and medical device animation for like the last 12 years. So we've got a great team, and uh, I created, I met with the National Federation for the Blind, we put out a survey to 5,000 people, and we got 900 responses, and what we've done is made the big decision to hire a Swiss watch designer who has the connections to some of the best manufacturers in the world for watches. And that was a big decision because it was very expensive. But through friends and family investment, we did it, pulled the trigger on that. He connected us, circulated our RFP. We found a manufacturer who gave us a price of $250,000 to create the audio watch alpha prototype, beta prototype, 1,000 completed units and 9,000 modules to be made up into completed units is what you get for $250,000, which is actually an amazing deal, but he's very interested in it because he wants to be the one to produce it. So I met with him in New York, headed off with them as a team, we moved forward, but we still need that $250,000, and the thing stopping us is investors say, you know, you're not a watch company. How do I know you can make this watch? Where's your prototype? So what I did was we created a fashion watch to convince our investors that we can indeed make a beautiful luxury watch that will sell. Went on Kickstarter, raised $34,000 with a successful Kickstarter campaign. Have 164 baggers shipping out 210 watches in July of this beautiful fashion watch. And when we show this to investors, they're still convinced, but they still want to see a prototype. So we went to the manufacturer and said, what can we do with $10,000? And he said, well, we cannot create the software, but we can create a mechanical prototype. So that's what we're doing. With your help and the $10,000 from this jackpot, we'll make a prototype. Easiest thing in the world to do is change the language in the chip, guys. It's got wonderful international potential and wonderful social benefit. I hope you'll all be a part of it.